Okay, so hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the stereo head unit in this van from the CD 6000 or 6000 CD Ford original head unit into this aftermarket Pure Highway H250S, which is a, a DAB digital unit. This was previously fitted in my car, uh, which was a Fiat Punto Mark II, which I did a video on the installation of. And now I have got a new car, I am putting this into my van, which is a Ford Transit Mark 6. If you watch the other video, if you want, um, I'll link it in the corner up here somewhere. But I already made this adapter. So because this is a digital radio, it requires a digital antenna and an analog one for FM. So what I got was this adapter that allows you to put the standard FM aerial in. And this box here splits it into FM and digital and requires power. So basically I just made this little, this is just a straight through adapter that also powers the DAB antenna splitter. So anyway, that, that's that. Now what you're going to need for this is obviously a head unit of whatever variety. If you're not doing DAB, uh, digital radio, you won't need one of those if you just put a standard head unit in. You're going to need the kit, which you can find on eBay, Amazon, wherever. Uh, and basically you get two cables, which are these two here. This one here is for the speakers, so that changes the default Ford connector into the standard radio connector here. And this one here is for the power, so this one converts negative, the positive, the ignition switch positive, etc. Uh, into the stereo, into the standard connector again. Then you get this plastic surround which goes in, this is just to convert to a single DIN height, because obviously that head unit is bigger than standard. And then it'll also come with this little uh, support bracket arm thing here, which uh, holds the back end of the radio up, which is what this bar is also for on here. So I'll show you that in a minute. There's the default wiring that's in the van. You can see that's the antenna there. And that's the two cables coming from the wiring loom in the vehicle. Then also up here in the top, you've also got this metal bar here. That's what that black support bracket clips onto and that holds the back end of the head unit up because there's obviously nothing really in there to support it. So the first thing I've done is I've removed the original head unit anyway, it's down there with the keys in it, you just put the keys like this in either side and pull the unit forward. So what I'm going to start with is by putting these cables in here out of the way for now and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put this support bracket on uh, because this will vary depending on how deep your head unit is uh, where it needs to go. So what you do first with this is put it into the top here and slide it over from the front like so and just push that on a little bit and then I get the head unit now and I'll offer that up and see how far back it needs to go. It's easier to roughly adjust this into place now than trying to push it back with the head unit because it gets quite stuck, it's, it's pretty solid. So it's easier to slide it beforehand. So I'm just going to get the head unit like this and offer it up, making sure that piece of metal is sticking out. It's going to be quite hard to film this because there's not much light or gap to record in. But that's now sat in that support arm there at the back. But if you notice, it's too far forward. So I'm now going to stick one hand holding the head unit and one hand under the back and adjust that back until it sits flush. So that's now sitting a little bit proud of there, but obviously we've got to put the plastic surrounding, so that's roughly where we want it. So that's about right. So now I can set the head unit back out again. And now the first thing I'm going to do is fit the plastic fascia around. This has got a couple of clips on it, but they're not brilliant. So I'm just going to offer that up. You'll have to sort of bend it and manoeuvre it into position until it sort of clips. So that is sort of in now, but it's still loose as you see, they're not great. You could maybe uh, put some glue or something around there to fix that in permanently, but I'm not going to bother because what I'm going to do next is put the cage in off the head unit. So I'm going to post that in like so. And now what you do is go around and bend all these metal pieces around and they should help clamp this trim into the actual dashboard that's already there and make this all a bit more solid. So I'll go do that now. Um, you can do this with either uh, pointy nose pliers 
or a screwdriver or, or whatever else basically wherever you can get some leverage in just to bend these down okay so i've gone around and bent all the clips best i can some of them you can't because there's too much plastic for them to reach behind um but that has obviously tightened this thing up better now it's not as loose as it was it's still a little loose but as i say if you were concerned you could glue this in so now i'm gonna reach my hand in and fish the cables back out and then we're gonna connect this up and uh, get the head unit itself in so now those cables are fished out we've got to connect up the wiring adapters here uh, now this one that's got all the cables in coloured pairs these are for the speakers and the speakers are this connector here so like this has only got front speakers in this van because there's no back seats or anything and what you do is if you look in this you should see a little clip piece there and all the connectors flat on one side if you look on here you'll see the clip that lines up with the little clip piece there so you put it around that way and that way this is rather hard to show with one hand but so it goes like that there and you push it in and it'll clip and click into place and be secure like that so that's sort of how you're going to want it to look and then the other one goes onto the other unit here same again clip the little mark there for it to clip into when you're putting this one in for the power as well just beware that it is not um full width of this socket so you can see there's a gap down the side there where there's a hole make sure that you're lining it up with the pins so make sure it's to this side here and in line with the clip because if not then you might get the connections wrong on here and that'll be why it won't work so there we go you can see that's the the right place it clicks in and it looks like that you see that missing hole there and that's that done so i'm going to push this in out the way now neatly down the bottom uh, and then i'm also going to connect on this adapter for my uh, antenna power and i'm going to connect that to the aerial and everything okay so that is now connected in to this antenna adapter the power's coming out there that's connected to the antenna and now these are ready to go into the head unit and we can put that in so there are the connectors into the head unit we've got all the power and speakers on that side got both the antennas connected here the little bar sticking out so now i'm just going to offer this up into the carriage until it clicks into place like it might have gone a little bit too far Okay, so I've just stuck my screwdriver in and bent them in a bit more. They were just a bit slack, that's why I didn't grab on. So now, that should clip into place. When it gets to that point. One side's got it. Okay, so that's now clipped into place. It's relatively secure, as you can see. It's not moving too much there's a bit of movement on this but as i say if you seal that in then that wouldn't be a problem if you glued it um for my case that's fine so next you want to put a little trim surround on the front here just to finish it off hides that metal cage and then when you've got that stuck in like so then you can put the front on if your units got a detachable front of course and now if you turn the power on and the ignition this should uh, oh no should work there we go so that's working as expected uh, let's put it into dab mode show that the digital radio is working I also need to change the setting on this head unit because by default it puts power to the antenna um, out of the aerial socket whereas that adapter I have doesn't need that so I'm going to change that really quickly but it should all be working it's currently doing a scan of the digital radio frequencies just to pick up what it can there we go, dab antenna change that to passive sorted so that now, if we go through here should have all the stations I've got full digital radio and full signal as well Nominate 
someone and we can make it happen. And there you go. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like down below. Any questions, put them down in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And get subscribed to my channel for future random technical and electrical videos like this one. Thanks for watching.